Hello, nice of you to join us on Newsroom Series. I'm Dominic Iwiwu. Today we'll be taking a look at the southwestern region of the country. But before we get into most of the news coming in from that region, let's have a look at our top stories making arounds at the moment. The Defense Headquarters says it has not announced the appointment of any senior officer as the acting chief of Army staff, contrary to speculation by certain media outlets, as no such appointment exists within the armed forces of Nigeria. According to a statement signed by the Director of Defense Information, Brigadier General Tuko Guso, says the Chief of Army Staff, Lieutenant General Tari Lagbaja, is currently on a well-deserved rest as part of his 2024 annual leave. The statement adds that Major General Abdusalam Ibrahim, who is the Chief of Policy and Plans, is providing routine briefs to the Chief of Army Staff in accordance with the standard military procedures. General Guso warns individuals spreading unfounded rumors to desist from doing so immediately as the Chief of Army Staff is hale and hearty and will soon resume normal duties at the end of his leave. We start off in Lagos State where the Environmental Sanitation Corps has arrested five persons for obstructing traffic and creating an environmental nuisance on Raymond Njoku Road, Ikoi, Lagos. The people were arrested over the weekend for completely taking over an entire street for a birthday celebration. Five of them, including the celebrants, will all face prosecution in a court of competent jurisdiction in accordance with the relevant laws of the state. The Lagos State government reiterates that no one is above the law and will not be permitted to disregard state regulations. We head over to Oyo State, where the state government says it is willing to partner with stakeholders to strengthen the criminal justice system by espousing the court administration system as a major tool to expedite court cases and decongest the prisons. The Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice in Oyo State, Mr. Abiodu Aikomo, gave the assurance in his office while receiving the delegation from Public and Private Development Center. He added that the state would provide an office for the project within the Ministry of Justice complex to create a seamless working environment with necessary logistics. The project coordinator, Mrs. Lucy Abagi, noted that the project would help to digitize the court administration system as over 70,000 detainees are reduced through an enhanced process which encourages case file losses, among other benefits. The court's administration management system, we need it here. Because the Ministry of Justice plays and in a very pivotal role. For every charge, they get advice from here. The programs that you are bringing will help us, even though it's not going to solve all the problems, but they will help us and uh, our lives will be better for it. We are ready to launch our court administration and case management project that entails that we are going to be supporting the states to, you know, optimize and digitize their courts and judicial processes. Um, we're happy that the state has made commitment to, you know, sustain and open the doors for us to implement our project and to set up the PAC committee, which is the, you know, the committee that is going to be working closely with us and our team in Oyo State to ensure seamless processes and to ensure that we get their support in verifying and assessing the different courts that will benefit from this. But just to speak about the aim of the project, we are looking at, um, partnering with different state governments to ensure that the over 70,000 detainees in Nigerian correctional centers are reduced drastically. That's to say that whatever process is causing the delay, we are working on ensuring that these delays are removed or eradicated totally. To politics now, the national chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Alahaji Abdullahi Ganduje, has appealed to leaders of the party in Ondo State to work together in ensuring the victory of the party in the November 16 governorship election in the state. Mr. Ganduje stated this while addressing the gathering at the Southwest APC stakeholders meeting held in Akure, the state capital. The International Culture and Event Center in Akure, the Undo State capital, is the venue of the Southwest APC Stakeholders Meeting. 
The national chairman of the party, Al Haji Abdullahi Ganduji, leads other members of the National Executive Council of the party. Also in attendance are the chairman of the Southwest Governors Forum and Lagos State Governor Babajide Sawulu, the Ekiti State Governor Biodu Oyebanji, as well as the host governor Lucky Ayedatiwa. The Ogun State Governor Dakbo Abiodun is represented by the Secretary to the State Government, Tokumbo Talabi, and other leaders of the APC in the Southwest. At the national level, the party chairman, Abdullahi Ganduji, wants all party leaders to be united and rally around the party's candidate in the forthcoming governorship election in Undo State. We are here to give you hope. We are here to encourage you. You are here to motivate you. We are here to energize you. You are here to make you feel that this election and the success in this election is a task that must be done. On his part, the governor of Lagos State, Babajide Sonwulu, appeals to all aggrieved leaders of the party, especially the co-contestants in the primary election that produced Governor Ayedatiwa, to forget the past for the benefit of the party and the state. In respect of our differences, all of us must come together. And that's why I brought the entire array to come and plead with you, to come and encourage you, to come and hug you, to come and appease you, to come and support you, to come and laugh with you, to come and everything. So that all of us are living here with one unity. Our chairman have said to 85% of total vote at the very demolished of Parapatani. Governor Loki Ayedatewa, in his remarks, appreciates the party's leaders present at the meeting. He notes that with their support, he is assured of victory in the election. All that you have said is noted. I want to thank you most especially for all the leaders of our party in Nondo State that are here in this auditorium. Every one of you, all former aspirants, all former ex executive council members, all of you that have served in one position or the other, our, our community leaders, our party leaders in Nondo State, every one of you that are here. Let me use Dr. Tunji Abayomi as a part of color to all of you that has come. And our women, I recognize every one of you. Leaders of the APC maintain that the Ondo election is very crucial and the party must ensure it works together for victory. The Ekiti State Governor, Mr. Abiodo Yebanji, has expressed satisfaction that the state under his watch has taken a bold step in all the key sectors of the economy as evidenced by verifiable indices of development. Governor Yebanji, who gave an account of stewardship before members of the Ekiti State House of Assembly while delivering the annual State of Affairs Address, comm commemorating the second anniversary of his administration, says his administration has been able to achieve much in two years in the areas of education, health, workers' welfare, security, because of the unflinching support and cooperation he had enjoyed from all and sundry so far. Extension of electricity and installation of transformer at Abaya Medi and adjoining communities in Adoikit. Replacement and installation of transformer in various communities across the state. Rehabilitation of 33 KV network from Ilumaoba to Ikolegi. That will be the commission next week Tuesday by God bless. Extension of 33 KV electricity network from Ilawe to Ibarau to Ikiti. That will be the commission in the course of this second anniversary. Extension of electricity to Abegundi Avenue and Akeju Lane in Emure. Extension of 33 low tension concrete poles to Olorun Shogo in its own local government in Sekiti. Rehabilitation and connection of the Kogosi back to national grid. Rehabilitation and connection of Ipoli Loro back to national grid. Rehabilitation and connection of Ija, Ilumoba, Aeseba, Agbado, Imesi, Ode, Isimbo Ode, Ebe. And Omo in Nayekiri back to national grid. Extension of electricity from Omo Ekiti to Edaile, Ikoba, Aranomi, and Lasha Ekiti. 
extension of Tadiri KBA lines from Eruku Kuala State to a, a grid protecting zone in EML. This is also the gate to Tabaji. The Speaker of AKT State House of Assembly, Right Honorable Adoya Aribasoye, says the state address is very important and it serves as a platform for accountability that will ensure continued development and prosperity for the people of AKT State. I must also say this. This is the half year of the tenure of the first time. The second time is come. The excellent time. I must also say this half year may be different from the first three years because I know your excellence to be a man of wisdom and I know you have a fine spirit. This second half, there will be more lives. Your Excellency must take a lot of things. Your Excellency, people who don't have anything to offer will be the one that will be shouting around as if they lost you. There will be more high service now. Lagos State Government has flagged off the supplemental immunization activities at the Fakoi Jai local government area. The exercise, which was carried out by Special Advisor on Mineral Resources, Mrs. Victoria Olowu, says vaccinations play a vital role in preventing health issues and also reflects the state's government's commitment to elevating healthcare standards for its residents. It's the official flag off ceremony of the supplemental immunization activities at Ifako Ejai, a local government area of Lagos. <laughs> Nursing mothers bring their children for the vaccination exercise, and the pupils are also not left out. No one will be immunized without their consent. It is very, very important. So there are consent forms. Parents have to fill the consent forms for the children to say, yes, go ahead and get this vaccine. The campaign targets three major infections, including yellow fever, measles, and human papilloma virus, with a focus on specific age groups for each. I hereby want to use this medium to make to reassure our people of the safety and efficacy of vaccines. We should all avoid rumors, misinformation, disinformation, and wrong perceptions about immunization. This momentous event underscores the critical importance of immunization in preventing vaccine-preventable diseases and ensuring that our children, young people and adults are equipped to live healthy, productive lives. The state government encourages parents to take advantage of the exercise and keep their children safe. Measles and yellow fever are highly contagious diseases that can spread rapidly especially in densely populated areas like Lagos. The government has gone to a lot of effort and a lot of expense to make sure that these vaccines are available for you. It would be a shame for anyone to die of a vaccine-preventable disease or be uh, maimed for life by a vaccine-preventable disease that was available on their doorstep. Representative of the First Lady of Lagos and a person of Special Advisor on Mineral Resources, Victoria Olowu says the exercise is a reflection of the Lagos State Government's commitment to elevating healthcare standards for its residents. By vaccinating our young girls, we are not just protecting them from a virus, but we are safeguarding their futures, their dreams, and their potential to contribute to our society. This integrated campaign is not just about vaccines. It is about creating healthier communities and a healthier future for all of us. The initiative aims to provide immunization services for ages ranging from 9 months to 44 years of age for yellow fever, 9 to 59 months for measles, and girls between the ages of 9 and 14 for HPV. Welcome back.
The Ogun State government has announced that it will deploy over 5,000 health personnel to various areas of the state for its 2024 missiles campaign, as the state is targeting about 1,136,953 individuals. The State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Tomi Koka, disclosed this during a press conference on the state's implementation of the 2024 Integrated Missiles Campaign in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State capital. The Commissioner says the seven-day exercise is free as it urged parents and caregivers to take advantage of the initiative by taking their children to the designated centers across the 236 wards of the state. I am therefore taking this medium to call on all parents, guardians and caregivers to take advantage of this campaign and the investment of the government in our children aged 9 months to 59 to ensure that they attend the designated centers across our 236 wards in our 20 local government areas to ensure that their children get vaccinated against this highly contagious killer disease, which is preventable, which is namely measles. The measles vaccine is safe, it's effective, and it's free. If you do not immunize your child against measles, you run the risk of your child becoming blind. You run the risk of your child having brain damage, what we convulsive uh, febrile illness, high fever that leads to the child having seizures and can be completely disabled for the rest of their lives. This is different from HPV. HPV is to protect against a virus, but when the virus infects the body, the changes are not obvious to the nat natural eye, but it causes damage to cells that eventually leads to cancer. And those are two different things. Um, measles is uh, it's fundamental to the child's measles vaccine is fundamental to protecting the child to ensure that the child development is not affected. The House of Representatives Committee on Ecology has called for a paradigm shift in the disbursement and utilization of ecological funds, insisting that the funds should be channeled to areas with the worst environmental degradation. This call was made by the Deputy Chairman of the House of Representatives Committee on Ecology, Honorable Shino Oyedeji, during an on-the-spot assessment of devastation at Goli erosion sites in Ogun State. Apparently overwhelmed by the level of devastation, the state government has, however, made a passionate appeal to the federal government to come to the, to the aid of the state. It's an assessment visit by members of the House of Representatives Committee on Ecology to gully erosion sites across the state. They seek to have a first-hand view of the level of devastation, and these committee members may have seen more than they expected. As witnessed in Ijebode, buildings have been washed away with fatalities while others are on the verge of collapse. The deputy chairman of the committee who led other members described the situation as calamitous. This is a serious situation that calls for immediate attention. We can't continue to allow this to happen. You know, uh, we need to discuss with the federal government. There's a fund for this. And we try to change the template. The area whereby some states who might not really have a magnitude of this uh, impact. You know, so we're having uh, access to little, little fund. No, 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 no. The fund must be used properly eh, to attend to what is required immediately. So there's an office that is managing this a committee. We have to sit down with them and make sure that uh, uh, I mean, places like this need immediate attention. In most cases, some of the communities affected have been cut off from others, and the State Commissioner for Environment, Mr. Olao Soya, said they may have to relocate from their ancestral homes to safer places. The, the best advice, really, is that uh, they have to uh, leave this location because anything can happen again. But we have to really consider the the emotional options, which are leaving your abode where you've been living for years, you know. So, and uh, we're going to look into it and uh, discuss with them, and uh, see how we can have a balance with uh, their safety and uh, their emotional uh, uh, involvement also. 
done with the visit to the sites, the committee members were received by the state deputy governor, Mrs. Noimot Salako Yedele, who appealed to the federal government to come to the aid of Ogun State. I'm very hopeful that very soon we will start to see some resolution of these problems. And I want to thank you very much for coming and say that the hope of our people rests with you to help us get this funding for what it is for, which is to ameliorate the problems that our people are having with this devastation for their lives and livelihoods. As part of the assessment tour, the committee members also visited the Sherry area, the epicenter of the yearly flooding in Lagos and Ogun states. In a bid to strengthen financial inclusion policy and empower women, particularly at the grassroots level, the Lagos State Government has commenced the process of inculcating financial literacy for indigent women in hard-to-reach communities as an integral part of the Sustainable Development Goals. The State Government's initiative was disclosed by the Special Advisor on Sustainable Development Goals, Dr. Oriol Lua Fini Awokoya, during a press conference at Alausa Ikeja. Dr. Fini Awokoya revealed that the first phase of the project, in partnership with some development partners, targets 100 women per community in 14 different local government areas of the state to accomplish an equitable Lagos where every woman thrives irrespective of circumstances. Representative of partners on the project, Mr. Oyeyinka Oyekon, says they are ready to inculcate financial integrity into indigently saturated areas of Lagos state. The project before us has been put together by the Office of Sustainable Development Goals in partnership with Africa HD, HCD Plus, OPE, and CARIWISE. It pronounces our responsibility and steady efforts to bridge the financial inclusion gap, especially for women in communities that have been underserved for years. If we are to achieve lasting success with our mandate, we must mandatorily carry everyone along. In context, Joyce Banda, Malawi's former president, once made a remarkable statement. When you empower a woman, you empower the whole world. And this is the glaring reality which we live in today. Therefore, this advocacy project forms a significant aspect of the Lighthouse Project and the overall mandate of the Office of Sustainable Development Goals. Through the Human Capital Development Initiative for Women, we believe that financial literacy is not a privilege, but a fundamental human right. Furthermore, financial literacy is an integral part of the Sustainable Development Goals which makes this initiative even more significant. This partnership will enable us to extend financial education to those who need it the most, women in underserved communities, empowering them to take control of their financial futures and by extension contribute to the growth of our great state, Lagos. Still in Lagos State, the state government has reopened the ever-busy pedestrian bridge at Alakbara Estate bus stop on the 3rd Mainland Bridge Axial Road after completion of work on the damaged bridge. The special advisor to the Governor on Infrastructure, Mr. Olufemi Daramola, who was speaking after an inspection of the completed bridge by a team comprising Lagos State government officials from the Office of Infrastructure and the contractors, says the Sonwolu administration places a high premium on the safety of lives and urge pedestrians and commuters to make good use of the bridge and not make it a selling point. This is Mr. Babaji Deolu Shola Sonwolu in action. This is part of um, the challenges we had. We made a promise that this bridge will be reconstructed, even though we're still going to come back for an official commissioning, but in his desire to ensure that Lagosians and pedestrians cross safely, he has directed that this should be open to the public today. And it's one of the things, uh, numerous things that are being done in the States. My advice for pedestrians is um, to take ownership Ensure we don't cross the road at um, other designated points. This has been done, it's been reconstructed to ensure pedestrian safety. 
we have to go take ownership, go away from where miscreants and people come and abuse this structure. And um, it's an opportunity to say thank you to LASMA and all official stakeholders that have made it possible during the period where we had to have alternative means of crossing the road. The Comptroller General of Immigration Service, Kemi Nadep, is seeking the collaboration and understanding of other sister security agencies towards achieving adequate safety and security at the entry borders into the country. She made the call in Abiyokuta, the Ogun State Capital, during her visit to the Ogun Command Office. While admonishing men and officers on professionalism and patriotism, she, however, warned against corruption, just as she promised the deployment of real-time modern technology solutions at the entry points into the country towards strengthening national security. What I say is a lot of hard work. It's a lot of hard work. And that means we need men of integrity, men who will not compromise the security of this nation. That's why I say to you that there will be zero tolerance to incompetence, zero tolerance to corruption. In as much as this has been said, I should also let you know that it is an opportunity. It is a beautiful thing that is happening in the service. So whoever is chosen, whoever is part of this team, I congratulate you because you are part of, it's the dawn of a new era for NIS. Because we're changing the face of NIS. We're changing what it is to do about border management. Border management is wearing a new look. We're deploying technology. We're deploying advanced technology. So that means the safety of our borders is guaranteed, is assured. And a safe border gives us a safe nation. And once our nation is safe, investments, economy will definitely develop. And as you know, that is the cardinal point of this administration. So I urge you, officers and men of Open State Command, to make sure that you are ready. To make sure that you serve your country diligently. And that's where we close this edition of Newsroom series. I'm Dominic Iwiwo. Stay safe.